This is an introduction to Algorand Smart Contracts and Teal. I'm Brian Olson, the lead software engineer behind Teal. Teal is the transaction appro execution approval language. Teal can analyze and approve a transaction on the Algorand network, but it cannot change or create a transaction. A transaction approved by Teal is as good as one signed by a regular public-private key signing. This happens in one of two ways. Either the Teal program is signed by a key, thus delegating authority for the program to authorize certain things as if that key had signed the transaction, or you can create a Teal program and use the hash of that program as the account address, and this creates a contract account where every transaction out of that account is governed by the program. A Teal program has access to a world like this. It has its program instructions, which execute one after another. It has a stack. Teal is a stack language, like an old calculator or fourth, and each stack value can either be a 64-bit unsigned integer or a byte string. It has scratch space. You can load and store between the stack and the scratch space as a way of storing intermediate values, and this immediate uh, alleviates the need for certain stack shuffling operations. It has visibility into the transaction uh, being all of the fields on the transaction so that you can evaluate it and see if this is something that you want to do. And it also has arguments. So you can take in a secret to unlock a contract or a numeric parameter to vary the result of the program. One of the shortest programs possible is this. It's just int1 or return true. A teal program is considered valid and approving the transaction if it concludes with a single non-zero value on the stack. So this does that. But never do this. This approves any transaction. You're not checking anything on the transaction, so everything is approved by this return true statement effectively. If someone, if you send money to this account, someone will probably notice and take that money. Here's a somewhat more complicated program. The first thing it does is checks the fee to be less than some reasonable amount. You should always do this because otherwise someone could send a transaction that the contract might approve where it just wastes all of the money on a huge fee, giving it all away. The next thing it checks is the close remainder to field. A Algorand transaction has two ways of sending money, one by a specific amount and one by the rest of the money that the account has. You, if you don't want to do that, you should make sure that one or either of these fields is zero if that's not the mode you're going for. We check that the receiver is a specific recipient in this contract so that only a specific person can take the money as authorized by this. We check a lease to say that only one of these uh, transactions can hold this lease in the first valid, last valid period. So once every thousand rounds, 999 rounds, you can do this contract so that the account authorizing, authorizing this contract gives away five algos, up to five, five algos, to the designated recipient every thousand rounds. And that's what this contract does. So all of these things are just and, 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 and down the line, they have to all be true. The expression at the top is expressed in the program below. First we push 999 and just leave it on the stack for later. Then we load arg0, convert it to from a byte string to an integer, and duplicate it, a little stack shuffling there, and then we compare it to zero. We push the constant zero onto it and compare them. The greater than operation will compare the two things on top things on the stack, pop them, and push zero or one depending on if it is great, greater than. Then BNZ, branch if not zero, will, if greater than, branch to the OK label, otherwise fall through to the code below. So if argz was if arg0 was 0 then throw away the extra copy of int arg0 that we did with the dupe operation above 
leaving just the 999 on the stack. And as a non-zero int, that can be used as a true value, and we jump to the end and either do other things or end the contract at that point. If argz was not zero, so bnz, so greater than push to one, bnz said one is not zero, so branch to okay, we get here, and this takes 999, which was still on the stack from the beginning, divides it by the duped copy of the integer form of arg0, and checks that the result of that is greater than 500, and pushes that to a stack of 0 or 1. And now that 0 or 1 becomes the only thing on the stack, and that is the true or false value. So at the top, that whole expression winds up being what this, is, this program expresses. Here's another expression to example. The, in, the, in this case, we have a two transaction atomic group and transaction zero amount times A equals transaction one amount times B. This is equivalent to checking that the ratio of the two amounts is equal to the ratio of B to A. But if we did this uh, the simplest way, we could have overflow. Overflow in many of Teal's mathematical operations causes a panic that fails the transaction, fails the program, and thus rejects the transaction. So here we're using the multiply wide instruction, which takes two 64-bit integers and multiplies them out and keeps all 128 bits of result. So we do, the, do one multiplication and then move aside the low half, which is the last thing on the stack, and we store that into scratch space at position 2. Then we do the other multiplication and again move aside the low half and store that at scratch space position 4. We still have the high half of both of those multiplications left on the stack. Compare them. Then bring back the low halves and compare them, and then check that both halves were equal and now we have the expression at the top expressed in teal. There are several things that teal cannot do that we've done for simplicity and uh, efficiency and to make sure that teal contracts running on the Algorand network keep everything running very fast and efficient. You cannot create or change a transaction, only examine a transaction and approve it re or reject it. Teal cannot look up balances of algos or other assets. Teal cannot access information in previous blocks or transactions. That would be a potentially large amount of uh, storage seek time, and we can't uh, promise that that will be fast enough. Teal cannot know exactly when it is running, but it knows that the transaction is somewhere between first valid and last valid, so you know approximately when it, ex it is executing. Uh, Teal cannot ex know exactly what the time in the real world the transaction is happening, but again, with Algorand rounds taking approximately five seconds, you know approximately when in the future the tra transaction block will happen. Uh, Teal cannot loop. Branch if not zero can only branch forward, so you could use this to detect that an argument is zero, and a divide by zero would panic and fail the transaction, but you could skip that divide and then do other code. And Teal cannot recurse. Teal can do a lot of things. We have templates available in the Algorand source code and in the SDKs available for doing several real-world patterns that we think could be useful. And also, it's a fairly capable programming language, and we hope you will do lots of interesting things with it. And I hope you create some good, useful, and fun applications programming in Teal for Algorand smart contracts. Thank you.